Well, welcome to our orientation 411 today, um, hosted with the Office of Admissions and the Office of New Student and Family Programs. Uh, so today we're going to be here to answer a lot of your questions. Uh, and with me today is Allie. Hi, Allie. Hello. Hey, everyone. Um, and we, we do have a couple members of your team here as well. So uh, if you want uh, to give them a second, introduce yourself and, and the members of your team, that'd be great. All right, so hey everyone, once again, my name is Allie Campbell. I am a senior here at Winthrop and I'm the Student Orientation Coordinator for staff. Hey everyone, my name is Tariq Johnson and I'm a junior here at Winthrop and I am the Student Orientation Coordinator for Engagement. Man, you guys got long titles. Uh, so in addition to our new student and family programs folks, we do have some admissions counselors and representatives from the Office of Admissions in the chat as well. Uh, so as our, our webinar goes on today, if you guys have any questions, feel free to go ahead, throw them in the chat. Um, but with that, Allie, I think we, we should get started on talking about orientation, what they need to prepare for. Yes, let's do it. All right, so I'm going to share my screen here with you guys. Um, I have a little PowerPoint slide I'm going to show. All right, so can we see this good? Okay, so this summer orientation is going to be split into two parts and they are both required. First, we have first flight, which is our virtual piece. And then later on in the summer, we'll have Eagles Landing, which is gonna be the in-person part of orientation. So the very first step is to make sure that you are registered for an orientation session. And you can do this on our website at winthrop.edu slash orientation. And once you're registered for a session, you will get an email about starting first flight. You'll get it from orientation at winthrop.edu. And this is the title line. Um, it says it's time for first flight orientation instructions. And if you don't see this in your inbox and you are registered for orientation, check your spam or your junk. It may be in there. But it was sent to both your Winthrop and your personal email. And in that email, you will find instructions with how to get to first flight. And you'll also see some deadlines for first flight and for advising. So make sure to make a note of that. So I'm going to talk to you guys about how to actually get to first flight. You can get to it through the email. There's a link, but you can also get to it through Blackboard, which is one of our student portals. And so you can get to Blackboard through any Winthrop homepage. And so if over here on the right, you click on quick links, you can go to Blackboard and that's where you can find first flight listed at. So mine is already logged in and you'll just log in with your Winthrop credentials. And you'll come down here to my organizations and you'll either have freshman or transfer orientation first flight depending on which one you are and so once you click on it it'll bring you to the home page here and it gives you a little bit of information and it tells you to get started we have a tab over here on the left so on the left you can see this panel it's divided into required first flight content and additional first flight content so you'll come over here to starting first flight and this is where you'll get started in this part we have lots of different videos but the way first flight is layered is that it builds on one another so you can't see the next video until i click this one as mark reviewed after you watch it some people have been having troubles getting it to play um it might not work if you click this i know it looks confusing but that's just to show you that it's a video so you can see here it says to click the title link above so i click on this and that's how I get to the first video. It'll load here in a second. And then I can click play to get started. You'll watch this video, click mark reviewed, and then it'll pull up your next video for you. And that's how you'll work through all of the tabs. So you can't even get to this one without going through those videos in the first tab. So that's how you'll work your way through first flight. We had some of our office staff do it and it took um, anywhere between two to three hours to do it in one, sending, or in one sitting, but we gave you guys at least one week to do it. So that way you can kind of spread it out and you don't have to do it all at once, um, but it should take you just a couple hours to get through it. Some of the sections have quizzes. They're not very hard quizzes. They're just to help make sure you get that information that you need. And then once you're finished here in this building connections tab, You'll see I can't see it yet because I haven't gone through this stuff, but once you get here, it'll tell you about meeting your orientation group and how you can interact with them. 
And so that's under this additional first flight and you can still access this even if you're not done. So if you have any questions about getting through first flight or about advising or anything, this is where you can go and find your orientation leader and ask them. Um, so if you're listed as a student, your group will pull up right here. Um, I'm not a student going through first flight, so that's why I don't have one, but this will be where you'll find your OL. And they have their office hours listed, so you can see when you can contact them, and they are a great resource to use through all of this. They've gone through a lot of training for you guys, and they're super excited to interact with you. Um, so that's how you can find them. I also want to point out the panels tab. We've been doing some panels for you guys. We actually have one tomorrow on Life in Rock Hill. So this is how you'll find that. Um, one other important tab is this registration help tab. So after you've met with your advisor, and we'll talk about that in a second, um, but once you're registering for classes, if you have any kind of trouble or anything, you can go to this gold link right here and you can go into a video chat similar to what you're in now and there will be staff members who can help you. And these are the hours they're available. So you can see they're even available right now for students who may have some issues with registering. But this registration help tab is how you'll find that. And then the last thing I'm gonna point out on first flight is the new student checklist. This tab has tons of information that can be helpful for you guys. Um, and you don't actually have to click mark reviewed on these. That's more of just a personal note if you wanna make note of the things you have and haven't done. So we have your admissions portal, checking your their email, housing. If you need the, computer, the commuter status form, you can find it here. Here's some immunization help. They actually have a step-by-step -step guide with how to upload them, so that could be great for you guys. Um, veteran benefits, parking permit, there are tons and tons of stuff here. The Res Life page. So I really encourage you guys to kind of mess around with these tabs and see what all kind of help we have for you. But so once again, this is just how you get to first flight, which is the required online part of orientation. That's not what we're in right now. Right now we're just doing a, um, just a panel to kind of give you guys some more information and give you the chance to ask questions. Um, but attending what we're in right now is not the same thing as working through these first flight tabs right here. Um, so then once you have finished your first flight, you will get an email. It'll be from orientation at Winthrop again, um, confirming that you've finished everything. And this isn't like an automated email. It's one of our staff members who goes through and makes sure everything is good. So it may take a day or two, depending on when you finish, um, if it's over the weekend or something like that. But you'll get a confirmation email. And then from there, your advisor will reach out to you soon about an advising appointment. If you don't get through the required first light content by the deadline date, um, that was in that starting email, you will be pushed back into the next session. So if you don't get it like finished, it's okay. You can still come to Winthrop, you can still do orientation, but it will push back your advising session. So just kind of be aware of that as you're working through the first slide. And so those advising sessions are going to happen on your original June session date. Um, so I know for session one and two, our advising sessions have finished, um, but our session three advising dates are June 18th and 19th and session four is June 22nd and 23rd. So if you're still working through first flight, um, these are the dates your advisors will reach out to you. If you haven't heard from them yet, just know they are coming. They are working with multiple students right now, um, but they will reach out to you. And if you haven't heard from them, you can reach out to your orientation leader and they can kind of see what's going on with that. And once you are done with advising and registering for classes, then you are through with the virtual piece of orientation and you'll get more information about Eagles Landing either a little bit later this month or in early July. But once again, Eagles Landing is that in-person orientation date. And then real quick, I just wanna show you guys um, just a quick little timeline. So if you were in session three or if you were in session one or two and didn't finish first flight, that means you got put into session three. So your guys' um, first flight required deadline is June 15th. So that was yesterday, I believe at midnight. If you've gotten through it today, you'll still be put in that email. We'll get an email sent out later today. Um, but if you were in session three, your first flight should have already been done. And then these are your advising dates. And then for those who were in session four who did or who did not finish session three in time, um, we've extended your date until tomorrow at midnight. You will get an official email saying this later on. Our um, Office hasn't gotten it sent out yet today, but just so you are aware, if you haven't finished it yet, your date is June 17th. So make sure you get it done by then, um, or if not, your advising and stuff will be later on in the summer, and we don't want to have to worry about that. So make sure you're working through it diligently. 
Um, but that's all I kind of wanted to run through with you guys real quick. I'm going to come back to this overview for you. Um, but do we have any questions or anything? Yes, Allie. So we do have a couple questions. Um, and I, I, I'm going to read through one that was private message to me. And then I've got a couple other ones that we want to go through. We already have Ani and Sierra answering some questions for us, but we're going to answer it through the video chat as well, just to make sure everyone gets that answer as well. Uh, so I actually have a student in here that's already completed their first flight, so they're already done, um, and they are just waiting on their contact from their advisor. Um, and they are a student who was originally in session one. Now they've been moved into another session, um, but they were asking uh, when they would receive contact from that individual. And it looks like they're in session three at this point. So uh, could you reiterate when they're going to receive that contact about advising? Yes, so if you're in session three, your advising will be June 18th and 19th, and I know that's later this week. So your advisor should either be in contact with you this afternoon or sometime tomorrow. But the actual session will be on one of those two days. So at least you have that kind of narrowed down a little bit, but they'll get you a specific time, hopefully by the end of tomorrow. And once again, if not, just reach out to your OL and they'll let us know and we can get that worked out for you. You beat me to the second second question, Allie. I was gonna say, if I don't get contact, who do I contact? Yes, yes. contact your sure. own call. All right, perfect. Um, and I'm gonna jump right to a question that I think Sierra are, has already answered. Um, it looks like, yes, this student's also already completed first flight. It, it looks like a lot of you might have already done so. Um, if you've already registered for courses, and you've completed first flight, when are you supposed to receive information on Eagle's landing? So that will be coming out in either later this month or early July. We're still kind of getting all of that put together for you guys, but it will be soon. Excellent, yeah, so you're not missing any emails, guys. If you've already finished everything, just hold tight. Um, I would imagine we're gonna try to get through all these orientation sessions in June before we send out an email regarding your Eagle's mm -hmm. landing. Um, and just so everyone's aware, Eagles Landing is our on-campus component of orientation. It's going to be one day. I, I imagine there's a lot of fun planned. Um, Allie, Tariq, I think you guys are planning a part of that, aren't you? Yes, we've got lots of exciting things planned. Excellent. No spoilers, right? We're going to keep no. spoilers. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Okay, so let's see. Once again, Sierra's always on fire with these questions. Um, so where can we find where we registered for orientation? That's a great question. Um, and I think everyone should know uh, if, they're, if they're unaware of where they can find their orientation information. You can find it in two places. So first place you can look is by checking your email. You should have an email uh, in your Winthrop email inbox that includes where you registered for orientation. Um, but if you are, can't find that email for whatever reason, you can reach out to the Office of Admissions or the Office of New Student and Family Programs. Um, but definitely check that email first. It's a little bit quicker to just get it there. Um, but we're a good resource for you as well if you do not know. Let's see. What other questions do we have? I completed first flight on June 10th. Am I in session three? Question mark. Uh, I think that's more of a personal question, but Allie, if, if someone's completed their first flight at this point, it's likely they could be in session three? Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of the days that they get added in to think of what session mm -hmm. it could be. Um, I think it could be multiple yeah. sessions. Yes, yeah, so it would kind of be more of a personal um, thing. So, Tara, but you can actually, email. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You're good. I was just going to. Hey, emailing orientation at is always a good go-to. Um, we do have an office manager who is going through those emails. Um, and you can also reach out to your orientation leader who will reach out to us and we can work through that in the same way. Awesome. And it looks like Sierra also answered that one too because uh, we have access to some of that information as well. Um, and actually, we've run out of questions, guys. But I think, you know, you guys explained your, your titles a little bit. But can you guys go in depth in terms of what you guys actually do with the Office of Orientation? Yeah, um, so my title was the, oh, we call them SOPs for short. That stands for the Student Orientation Coordinator part because it is so wordy, as you're saying. Um, but my position is with staff. So I work with training our orientation leaders. Um, we start our training in the spring semester. So I worked on coming up with a training schedule for that. And then a training schedule for our summer, which, um, you know, given the COVID and everything, we've had to redo a lot of our scheduling and stuff like that. Um, but I do get to work with training the orientation leaders. 
Um, and for me, I am the SOC for engagement. So like Ali said, SOC is short for Student Orientation Coordinator. So basically my job is I'm the TA for the Orientation Leaders Leadership class. Um, basically every leadership position you hold on campus, you have to take a leadership class. And for the Orientation Leader class, I'm the TA for that. So I basically help out in the classroom. Um, I plan and manage different events that our office put on. Um, whether it's like fun day for the orientation leaders or different outreach programs with different departments across campus. And another big thing for my position is like graphic designing. So I do a lot of the flyers and stuff that you guys may see on like our social media. This beautiful first flight flyer um, that you see, the icon, I made that. So that's pretty much a big deal of what my job consists of as well. Excellent. Well, I wanted to make sure that was clear uh, because some people might be saying, why isn't Allie my, my orientation leader? Why isn't Tariq my orientation leader? These guys are behind the scenes. They're doing great things for, for the Office of New Student Family Programs. And it looks like we do have a couple more questions coming in. Uh, so Paula asked, my videos aren't loading right now in first flight. What can I do to troubleshoot that? Um, so my first thought is how we were talking about earlier, sometimes you have to try clicking the link title instead of the actual video itself. Um, on mine it works either way, but I know for a lot of people it doesn't. So if it doesn't work when you just click it, try to click this title right here. Um, you see it actually makes my cursor go to like a little pointer, I don't know the technical words, you know, but you can see it changes. So try to click the link title, that might help it work instead. Perfect. Yes. And I think we, we've had a couple people try that um, and it works for them by doing that. And a couple other options that you can look into that uh, I've heard students had success with are going to be uh, trying a new browser. Google Chrome, I believe, is one that works really well with Blackboard. Um, and you can always try clearing your browser history, clearing your cache and your cookies. If you don't know what those are or computer terms. I don't really know what they mean either. Just go ahead, go to your settings and it should be options there for you. Another option that I did not realize you could do is actually just going onto your Blackboard mobile app that you can download on iOS and Android uh, and try watching the videos on there. So if you try those and none of those work, best place to reach out to is the New Student and Family Programs Office to make sure that we get you sorted out um, and, and help you troubleshoot whether your OL is helping you or Ali or Tariq are, are gonna help you with that. All right, so we got a couple more questions coming in. Let's see how much, this is This is not just an orientation question, this is a first year student question, uh, so you guys can be really helpful with this one. How much should you bring from home when you move in? Oh goodness. Well, not as much as I did because I brought way too much. <laughs> um, you'll definitely learn as you go what you will and won't actually need. Um, so when you move in in August, maybe don't bring your big winter coat yet. Um, when you're here in December, don't have your tank tops with you, that kind of thing. Um, I think it's kind of just a person by person basis um, with what all you do want to have and don't. Um, I like to have a lot of things decorated, so I had tons of stuff on my wall, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. It's a hard question to answer for sure. <laughs> it is, and that's why I, I, I pushed it on to you guys. <laughs> yeah, so um, going based off of what Ali said, definitely um, you don't want to make the mistake of bringing everything whenever you first move in, because I also made that mistake. I had all my winter jackets and everything um, along with me, but you definitely don't want to do that. Um, I would say start off with bringing your essentials first and then go from there. Um, and also pack just for that specific season. So um, fall semester, you want to bring like um, seasonal specific things. So like maybe your short pants and fall clothes, like a little bit of your fall clothes. So um, pack for the seasons, I would say. Definitely pack for the seasons. It might be okay to bring some lighter long sleeve wear, maybe a jacket or two, definitely rain jacket because we are in South Carolina, but I think we can all agree there's such thing as packing too much. Uh, and worst case scenario, you can always have mom or dad uh, send your, your items through uh, the mail because you have a PO box here on campus if you're living on campus as well. All right, so I have a student who asked, they, they completed their first flight at 4.03 today. So good job, you completed it 17 minutes ago. Does that mean that they're in session three? Um, 
Logan that for Visa for session three? I think um, that, was that one just kind of come down to how our office um, does. I don't, I'm not the one who does the cutoff line, um, but I do know she had mentioned four o'clock today. So that's right around there. So I can't, I honestly can't say for sure. Um, but whichever session you are going to be in, you're, you will get an email soon stating that very clearly for you and with what days you're advising is, that should be stated clearly in that email for you as well. Right. Fingers crossed you made the deadline. Even If you did not, though, if you didn't, it's okay. We have more registration and uh, advising sessions throughout this summer. So uh, main, mainly in June, but we might even have some in July as well. So. The faster you do all this stuff, the faster you can get uh, you can get advised and you can get registered for classes. Um, now we do have another question right here, and this is this is a good question. How do you find out what who your orientation leader is? Oh, we love our OLS. Okay, so when you are in the kind of homepage area, of first flight like this, um, where you have this panel over here under additional content, if you go to my orientation group. It'll pull up and right down here under this box, it'll have your orientation group in it. And that's where you'll find out your orientation leader, their office hours. Um, you'll see other students that are in your group. There's like an introduction page where y'all can type your introductions out and that sort of thing. So that's right under the My Orientation Group tab. Oh, can't highlight it. It's right there. And you, yes, right there. And you better introduce yourself to your OL because your OL is a great resource. Um, and when you get on campus for the first time this fall in August, you want them to be able to be uh, a mentor to you. So definitely introduce yourself to them. Feel free to ask them questions. They are experienced, successful students on campus. Um, and with that, Allie, you were you were an OL at one point, weren't you? Yes, I was. <laughs> and <laughs> Tariq, you were you were as well. Yep. Excellent. So every OL has their their own name. I'm going to ask, what were your OL names, your group names? Some college makes me really scared if you don't know where they're fit in. But with over 170 different clubs and organizations here at Wyndham, you'll fit in just fine. And you can even play your own team. So my orientation theme was, um, uh, it was like a space theme, like the Wooniverse type thing. So I was Allie's Apollos. Allie's Apollos. All right. And when when I was an orientation leader, um, our theme was a whole woo world. So it was kind of like travel theme. Um, and my group name was Tariq's Taxi Cabbers. Tariq's Taxi Cabbers. I like it. Well, when I was an OL, I uh, we we had the I think it was a movie theme that year. I can't remember what it was. What we what the catchy phrase was. But my group's name was Ties Tarzans. It was Ooh. great. Right? Kind of awesome. like ours now. It would fit very well with our Woos Studios. You're a part of Gracie's Greatest Show. We we have a Oh I hear yeah. someone's um I heard someone's intro video playing with their OL, so I'm glad to hear you're figuring out how to find those tabs. Um that was Gracie's Greatest Show I heard playing. Um so very exciting things. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to these questions. I lost my place here for a second. Here we are. Um, how do we know I'm signing up for the correct classes for my freshman year? That's a good question. I, and you guys have been answering a lot of questions, so I'm going to take this one from you. Um, but your advisor is your ultimate resource for your classes. They are experts in their fields. Uh, they are not just random people from across campus. They are generally going to be people from your college that uh, have experience with students graduating. So they know what you need in your freshman year. Um, now that being said, you can use your outside resources if you know students that are currently there, you can ask them their opinion about courses. I wouldn't let that be your definitive choice for picking classes, uh, but definitely listen to your advisor um, and use your resources through our Facebook groups and Instagram uh, to ask questions about other courses. Because I know uh, I've had students come up to me and ask, uh, Biology 221, Biology 220, what's that like? Or uh, Public Speaking 101, what, what can I expect from that course? Uh, former students and current students can definitely give you some input on those. Let's see. Now we've got another question about placement tests. Do we have to take a placement test or are we able to use high school college credits to bypass placement tests in certain subjects? Do you know the answer to that one, Allie? 
Um, I know it'll depend on what your major is for placement tests. Um, we have both a math placement test and a foreign language one. Um, and once your credits get in, um, if you took like dual enrollment courses or AP courses, um, we have to wait for those to get transferred into Winthrop before we technically know you have that credit. So it couldn't hurt to go ahead and take the placement test just to see where you place into um, because you could place higher than what you get credit for or something like that. So that would be my advice. Yes, great advice. Um, and just to reiterate, with the math placement test, only certain majors will have to take that one. So it's generally going to be your math and science related fields. So if you're going into mathematics, uh, biology, chemistry, business, computer science, anything of that nature, you're probably going to need to take that math placement test prior to advising and prior to orientation. Um, now with the foreign language placement test, we are asking for students to who have to take a foreign language as far as their, of their degree to go ahead and take that. Um, but I believe you're also able to hold off on that a little bit. Um, I actually never took my foreign language placement test until my junior year. Uh, so it just depends on when you're planning on taking those courses. And if you've never taken a foreign language before or you're switching foreign languages to something you've never done before, you really don't need to take that test because you're brand new to it. I wouldn't try to place out of a Spanish placement test if I've never taken Spanish before. All right, so let's see. We've got, and once again, Sierra's on top of these questions, man, always. Um, the meeting for advisory uh, for me was an email detailing information regarding the courses I should take. And I emailed back and forth a little to get a better grasp of some of those courses when I registered for them. Uh, so just to reiterate, advisors are meeting with students from across, uh, across the U.S. at this point, we have about a thousand students going through advising, uh, and your advisor is going to reach out to you in a number of ways. I know some are doing video chats, some are emailing. Uh, for some of you, there is a very strict uh, record of what courses you need to take in each semester. Others, it's going to be a little bit more fluid. You can choose a little bit more. Uh, so once again, make sure you're communicating with your advisor. They're going to let you know what courses you really need to register for. All right. Let's see what our next question is. All right, I have a student who wants to take Spanish for credit, but does not, uh, let's see, I wanna take Spanish for the credit, but does it go off of what I completed in high school? Or, okay, I think that one kind of relates to your language placement test once again. Um, we are not really gonna look at what you took in high school, for your placement into a Spanish course. It's actually based off of your Spanish language uh, placement test. So if you took all the way up to Spanish four in high school, uh, we're still gonna make you take that foreign language placement test. That being said, with Spanish four, you might place into 102 or 201 because you have prior experience with the language. Um, now, if you do have those AP credits in that foreign language, as Ali said, we can transfer those in and they could count as your uh, foreign language requirements. But not everyone does have a foreign language requirement. So once again, make sure you're communicating with your advisor to see what you need to graduate. And actually, with any student who's in here, great recommendation is to go ahead and download your current degree course uh, checklist, which is going to be found on our website. All you really have to do is go to winthrop.edu, type in what your major is into the search bar, and we're going to have degree checklists for every single major. Uh, so that's a good way to understand what you're going to need, at least roughly, to get your degree. All right, now we got questions rolling in. Uh, when do we get to schedule our fall semester? Right after first flight or after we meet with our advisor? Allie? Um, so like I was saying, you can find your degree programs online, but wait until you meet with your advisor. Um, they'll kind of get you the ins and out of what you need, and they'll also make it so you are able to register. So sessions three and four, y'all aren't actually able to register for your classes yet um, until you have met with your advisors. So y'all are more than welcome to go ahead and kind of look around at the classes that there are. Um, I know there are wingspan overview videos that you can use to assist you with that, but your advisor will kind of give you the, kind of the more set schedule that you'll be needing to take. Precisely, and you can't even register for classes until you meet with your advisor. They've got a little a little block button until until you've actually met with them. So don't think you can get around meeting them. All right, uh, this is a really good question, actually. So Tyla asked, uh, how do you change your major at this point? 
All right, um, so I know you can email orientation at winthrop.edu um, and tell us your, give us your name, your current major, and what you're wanting to ch uh, change your major to, and we can get that changed for you. Excellent, yes. Um, and if you guys are looking to add majors or add minors, I uh, just want to remind you that we're not going to do that right now just because we want to make sure we get your, your major in first. Uh, but as you transition onto campus, you can add extra majors and extra minors. It's really simple. All you need to do is go to the records and registration office and sign a little bit of paperwork. Uh, but I would recommend meeting with your advisor prior to doing that just so that you can start planning out what you need to do to complete that at this point. All right, so we got a question from Gavin here. Uh, do we also have to register for our second semester courses or just our first semester of courses? So right now you'll just be registering for your fall semester and then um, later on in the fall semester around like October or November-ish you'll meet with your advisor again to set up for your spring classes. So you'll meet with them at the end of every semester to get set up for the next one. Precisely, so this is kind of a weird one. Uh, when you're coming in your freshman first semester, we do things a little bit differently, but from here on out, you're going to meet with your advisor some point during the year. They'll send you an email or they'll, they'll reach out to you and say, hey, come meet with me so we can discuss your next course, uh, your next course load for the next semester. Uh, and then from there, it'll probably be around October, November in the fall uh, to register for the spring. And then somewhere around, what, March or April? for your registering for fall classes i think that's right it's been a while since i was a student um let's see next question that we have how do we know if your major requires a foreign language that's a good question now um, i know general rule of thumb is if you're in the college of arts and sciences and you're anything other than social work you are going to have a foreign language requirement now with all your other colleges the best thing you could do is check your degree checklist. There is generally going to be a foreign language requirement listed out in your general education courses, uh, but not every major will have that. I don't believe, and Allie, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, certain education majors do not have a, a, a language requirement. And I think several of the visual performing arts majors do not require it as well. Um, but the best thing you can do is talk to your advisor about it and also check the degree checklist because it will be set out there if you require a foreign language. All right. Awesome. Now we actually have a student asking about their concise student schedule. Um, and it says they're currently classified as a sophomore, but they're an incoming freshman. What does that mean exactly, Allie? So you are listed as a sophomore because you must have some kind of transfer credits coming in. Um, so actually the same thing happened to me. I had taken some AP classes in high school. And so once that credit got transferred over to Winthrop, I was listed as a sophomore. So I was like, what the heck? I know it can seem kind of weird, but it just means that you have um, that many credits. And so um, I believe, so you have to have 12 credits to be a full-time student, so I believe once you get past 24, because that's technically how many you would have within that first year, um, 12 and 12 would be that, that minimum number. So that, that just has you listed as a sophomore because you have more than that number of credits. Now, don't get it wrong though, you're still a first-year student, so uh, it yeah. doesn't mean you can bypass all those rules of, of so many credit hours before you can live off campus, and some of your seniority perks that you get as you get farther and farther in your time at Winthrop. Uh, but with that being said, congrats, you already have credits uh, and that can help you with your degree. But everyone who's here is probably a incoming freshman student or a transfer student. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing what your current classification is in the system, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, you can see that through your concise uh, student schedule. Now, Bree asked about the uh, requirement to have a minor. Um, do you actually have to have a minor as a student at Winthrop? And I can go ahead and tell you that's not the case. Certain majors will require a minor, but not every major. A uh, good rule of thumb is that a Bachelor of Arts degree will require a minor and a Bachelor of Science will not require one. Uh, that being said, I'm not sure exactly what a BFA would require. Uh, BFA might require a minor, but I don't generally work with those with uh, BFAs too often. Uh, Allie, do you, do you happen to know that one? I don't know that one. And that's okay. That's why your advisor is there because they know all this information and they can help you plan if you do need a minor. Um, but let's go ahead and jump on to the next question. 
And it looks like Sierra is uh, helping the student who is actually a Bachelor of Fine Arts major try to find a minor. There's plenty of them out there, which is a, a good resource. Use your admissions counselor, use your advisor to find those options. Uh, when I start classes in the fall, I will already have 30 credit hours. Uh, do I have to tell my advisor or will they already know that? Um, so your advisor can already see some things such as credits that you have transferred in. Um, they'll be able to see that on your degree works. So you can go ahead and let them know that you do have some credits because you might not need to take some of the introductory courses. Um, once again, that was the same case with me where I didn't need some of the 101 courses. Um, so you can definitely go ahead and let them know. So as you all are planning, they won't have you taking something you already have credit for. Yes, definitely. And uh, that's actually a really good reminder for everyone that's here. If you are taking AP, I, well, not really IB, AP or dual enrollment classes, make sure you're sending us your AP scores and your, your transcripts from your college that you're getting those classes from, because that's how we award you credit for those classes. We have to have your AP scores or we have to have that transcript from that institution that's granting you that credit. Uh, that way we can get it into our system. So you have some time to do that. If you want to try to get it done before your advisement, that's awesome. If it's not possible, I know some of you guys are still waiting on AP scores, just hold tight. Um, the great thing is after you've gone through advising, you can continue to register and change your course schedule. Um, so for me, I actually had a AP exam that came through in, my, in July prior to my freshman year and it allowed me to drop one course and add another because I had already received credit for it. All right, so let's go ahead and keep on going down. Looks like Joshua might have a question here. If your major doesn't necessarily require a foreign language, can I still go and minor in Spanish? Allie? Definitely. That sounds awesome. Um, so even if you don't have to have foreign language for your major, you can still take uh, foreign language classes. Even if you just want to take a one or two class, you can definitely still do that. Um, and you are able to minor in it as well. Yes, and, and as a college student, one of the best perks, uh, and especially about Winthrop University, is that we have a good variety of different courses that are based on student interest, um, including things like Spanish. That's, you know, a course you see at all colleges, pretty much, uh, but we also have scuba diving. Uh, we have courses on specific topics, like we've had food chemistry courses, we've had courses on literary merits of Harry Potter, and actually, Ali, I think this year we have a course on the literary merits of Marvel Comics, which oh. is a interesting topic, actually. Uh, who is teaching that? I think it's, is it Dr. Prickett? It might be Dr. Prickett. I, I need to look into that, but you guys can look into it because it should be under the English uh, courses that are currently available to students. All right, so let's see what other questions we have here. Scrolling down, scrolling down. I sent my final transcript through College Board. Can I also email it to the Office of Admissions? That's a good question. So this is a good reminder to everyone who's sending in final transcripts, final pieces of paperwork. If it comes from your email address, it's technically not official. Uh, it's not my rule. I wish I could accept every transcript that came in, but the way it works is we have to receive it from the organization that's issuing it. So for the college board, they're going to be sending us a lot of your test scores and your AP scores. You have to go through them. You can't screenshot it and send it to us. Same thing with the ACT. They have to send it. Now, the great news is your high schools are already in the mindset that they've got to send your transcripts. So generally, all you have to do is contact their records office, and they, know, they already know our email because they send us so many transcripts already that they know the procedure. Uh, but if you have any transcripts from other colleges and they don't know where to send it, make sure they know that they can send it to admissions at winthrop.edu. And you can send it at any point, but the faster you get it sent, the faster we get it into our system. All right, so we have another question about foreign languages. Uh, Joshua asks, I've taken up to Spanish 3, so should I take the placement test before I am scheduled to meet with my advisor? Allie, do you have a recommendation for that? Um, I would say you, it's always just a good rule of thumb to go ahead and take it anyways, um, just so you could see, like we were saying earlier, maybe you'll place higher or somewhere else, um, but it definitely can't hurt to take it. Definitely. Uh, honestly, if you've uh, if you've taken up to Spanish 3, you probably will qualify for a, uh, a higher level Spanish if you did well in those courses and retained that information. Um, it, it's just a matter of how you did um, and how far your specific instructor went in Spanish 3. 
All right. Let's see what else. So we've got some students asking about sending transcripts through Naviance. Naviance also works with us. Uh, they have their own method of sending it. Uh, Parchment is another service. There's a lot of services out there to send transcripts. Whatever your institution uses, we can most likely use as well. Um, and all you really need to do, if you haven't gotten an update uh, by checking your application status portal, uh, you can always email or call us at the Office of Admissions, admissions at Winthrop.edu, or 803 323 2191 if you have any questions about a specific transcript coming in. All right, let's see what else we've got here. How do I find out if Winthrop has received my high school transcript? Once again, definitely you can reach out to the Office of Admissions or you can check your application status portal. If you don't know where that is, it's actually where you originally created your application with us. We store all that information there. But if you can't access that, you can always just give us a call and we can access that for you. All right, let's see what else we've got. Got a lot of questions about high school transcripts today. Can we opt out of the language placement test and take the basic 101 Spanish course? The answer to that is yes, you can. If you don't want to take it, take 101. Don't feel like you're pressured into jumping into 102 or 201. Even if you take the language placement test, it is a suggestion for you. It's not necessarily a requirement. It's not like you could accidentally answer, uh, you know, by fluke, get placed in the Spanish 300 and we're going to make you take it. It's not how it works. It's just a recommendation. So even if you place into a higher Spanish and you don't feel comfortable about it, you can drop down. Now, that being said, it's very rare that students accidentally place into a Spanish course. So I would say go with the placement test and what it recommends for you. Uh, you know, it might end up in, in resulting into a minor if you're interested in that. Now, we do have another question coming in, and this is a, a change of pace. When are shot records due? When are your, your forms with health and counseling services due? Allie, do you know that one? I don't know the deadline, but I'm sure I might come find it real quick, unless you know it. I kind of do. Uh, so for anyone who has not turned in their forms with uh, immunizations, we recommend, uh, at least in the past, it's been that you have to have all of that in before classes start. Uh, so uh is that what it does that say the same thing if you do not yes, it's saying there if you go. don't have them done before the start of fall class you will be at risk of being charged a fee so you don't want to get those fees so make sure you get them in before classes start do not get that fee it's it's better just to go ahead and get those shot records into us now this is the first year that we've done 100 percent online with our immunization forms so definitely follow the instructions laid out right here on your uh, blackboard page they they have a nice set of instructions for you to follow um, and with that um, a couple of other bits of information that i did not know about immunization forms if you do not have them in you do get charged that 50 dollars non-compliance fee in addition to that though if there's any sort of outbreak of, of a uh, a virus that is covered through your immunizations like measles even within the state Technically, our Health and Counseling Services Office has to uh, make you vacate or isolate on campus. So if there's a, an outbreak of the measles like there was a couple years ago on USC's campus, uh, even, even at Winthrop, we've got to either quarantine you or send you home. So definitely get those in. <laughs> that way you don't have to miss out on some of your, your in-class time. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. A lot of questions about the language placement test today. Uh, and now, if you guys are looking to, to prepare for that language placement test, I recommend you can always use those little apps. Duolingo is a super popular one. Um, if, you've, if you're a little rusty on Spanish like I was, uh, you could also read your textbooks if you happen to still have those. Uh, but don't sweat it too much. It's trying to test your current knowledge of the language. Uh, so if you don't know it, don't feel like you've got a cram for it because we want you to feel comfortable in that first class you get into. Same thing with math except I might recommend study math a little bit more. Now, that actually, it looks like it's the end of our questions so far, and it looks like Elizabeth and Sierra are adding a lot of resources for our students here. Um, so, Allie, is there any other information that, that you'd like to share with students? Um, real, quick, uh, real quick, I'm just going to walk us um, through how to get to the first slide again. Um, so just a reminder for anyone who may have joined late or anything, um, this orientation 411 panel is not the same thing as doing the freshman first flight. 
Freshman First Flight is on Blackboard. So once again, um, you can find it in that starting email you got, or you can also get to it from any Winthrop Poem page. If you go to Quick Links and Blackboard, you'll log in with your Winthrop credentials. You'll click on either Freshman or Transfer Orientation First Flight, depending on which one you are. And then you will need to work your way through this required first flight content right here. And as I was saying earlier, it does build on one another. So after you watch a video or something, make sure you click mark reviewed to get the rest of them. And a good way you can check is if you go to this building connections tab and it says something like this, that means you haven't gotten through first flight. Once you have gotten through it, this will tell you some other instructions and then you'll get an email within the next couple of days. Um, and then I'm going to let Tariq make a quick um, announcement as well. So um, as you can see, she has the student expert panels flyer display on her screen. Um, so we do have a series of student expert panels going on with our office. So um, we already had our student involvement one. Um, this week we have our Life in Rock Hill student expert panels and each panel features a couple of orientation leaders um, and they'll just be talking about their different experiences with these topics and what you as incoming freshmen um, can expect with each one of these. So um, again, our Life in Rock Hill panel is tomorrow. It's at 1.30 p.m. And to find this, it's actually in your first flight. So um, it's in the OL Live panel tab and it should be a link displayed to reach each panel. Awesome. Well, hey, that sounds awesome. That sounds like a great opportunity. Um, I mean, I, I my one suggestion for Life in Rock Hill guys, by the way, uh, there's a really good restaurant that happens to be town town called Tattooed Brews. They do awesome pretzel and cheese. So if you guys are looking for like a quick snack and you happen to be downtown, head over there. It's awesome. But there's there's a ton of options in the greater Rock Hill area. And this place is growing. It's awesome. So with that, I think that it concludes most of our information for today. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stick around. Allie, I think he, up to you, but you can stick around as well. To answer. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for joining us today. And if you do need anything, you can always reach out to both of our offices, uh, admissions at Winthrop.edu or orientation at Winthrop.edu. Great ways to get some information. But with that, I hope you, we hope you have a great rest of your day, guys. Uh, and if you haven't already done it, go ahead and get started on First Flight. You've got the email. <laughs> also, really quickly, be sure to check us out on all social media platforms um, at Winthrop NSFP. We will be giving out different flyers and more information to come. So um, make sure you just be on the lookout at Winthrop NSFP.